Hello and welcome to the National Marine Aquarium in Plymouth. Today we're going to take you on a behind the scenes tour of the biozone area and show you some of the critters that we've got uh, in this area. Um, we're going to start with the compound butterfly fish, which we have been training to feed in a box. Um, and I'll explain a little bit why a little bit later. So let's go and have a look. So in this tank, we have lots of different critters. Oh, this is Alice, by the way. She's one of our biologists back here. We've got lots of different shapes, uh, body shapes, colors, and patterns. Um, that guy there, you can see, is the long-horned cowfish. And he's a goofy little fella. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the feed and we're gonna try and entice uh, Winston, the copper, ba copper band butterfly fish, into his box for a feed. So when we put the box in the water, the cowfish is swimming, but it's not who we want today. So while we're going around the tanks, feel free to ask any questions um, and we'll do our best to answer them for you. There we go. Oh, you almost, you almost want to. So part of the reason why we do, uh, we're conditioning Winston to swim into a box to feed is because in marine aquariums, it's really hard to get fish in and out of tanks. Um, so this is one really easy way where instead of having to catch him with a net, he'll swim into the box and we can take him out on his own choice, on his own accord. So why might we want to take Winston out of this tank? Well, one of the things about copper band butterfly fish is they're really good at pest control with a particular type of pest called anaptasia. Aptasia is a little anemone uh, that is a common pest in marine aquarium. And then you end up with more and more and more. So by being able to take Winston out and put him into different tanks that may have these Aptasia pest anemones, we're able to do a form of biological control and keep our pests to a minimum. So he almost wants to go in. There we go. See, he goes in there all on his own. So Lizzie, age nine, would like to know what types of fish do we have in the aquarium? We have hundreds of different species of fish in the aquarium, from small to big. Our smallest fish, I'll show you a little bit later, it's a little uh, pipe fish, um, and our biggest fish is one of our sharks, our big lemon shark called Citron. Um, we're not going to see him today, um, but if you get an opportunity after all this lockdown stuff is done, you'll be able to come in and say hello to the whole range. So what we're feeding them today, this is what we call a chunk feed, and chunk feed is just chopped up bits of fish, prawns or mussels. Today on the menu it's prawns. Um, so because these fish are quite small, we're going to give it the little tiny chunks because you can't give it a chunk that's bigger than its mouth, because then it won't be able to eat it. Logan aged eight would like to know which is my favourite fish. Oh, that is a really tough one. I am actually a fan of this long Horned cowfish because he's super goofy and has got all these wonderful adaptations to protect it from predators. So, in the wild, if a predator tried to get a mouthful of this cowfish, it would really struggle. It'd end up with four spikes in its mouth, and as well, it's got a really hard body, so it could be really hard to swallow. Taylor would like to know which fish is the friendliest. 
we actually have some very friendly fish in the aquarium. Uh, these puffer fish, so well these cowfish and the box fish are sort of members of similarly related to puffer fish and they're really intelligent fish and they're really friendly and really inquisitive. So they really want to know what's going on and explore their environment. So you could put a finger in there, not, not recommending it, but you could put a finger in there and instead of coming up and bite, it'll just come up and have a look because they just want to know what's going on. We also have a puffer fish that's really friendly. Um, that is a bit of an attention seeker, so whenever you're cleaning the tank, he'll spit water at you, which is quite frustrating. But we'll see if we can get him to do it in a minute. How do you choose names for your fish? Says Leah, ask Leah, age eight. Well, it's really hard. It's really hard to name anything. Sometimes it's about their personality. So most people think that fish don't have a lot of personality, but actually, after spending a bit of time with them, different species and different individuals will be completely different from one another. So it's hard to pick a name. We quite like alliteration, so this is Winston, one of our copper, vibe, copper band butterfly fish. And we also have another one called Wesley. So Wesley and Winston makes them really easy to remember. Hello, and we'd like to know if we have any unfriendly fish. I don't know, Alice, do we have any unfriendly fish? I don't think we have any unfriendly fish. I think most fish, deep down, are pretty friendly. Um, if anything, they'll be shy. They wouldn't be unfriendly, like they wouldn't be unhappy to see you. They just would be a little bit cautious at first. So Libby would like to know if puffer fish are poisonous. Some puffer fish are poisonous and some aren't. So when we commonly think of puffer fish, um, we think of slightly smaller spined uh, fish that inflate themselves um, and they tend to be have some toxins. But if we move on to this tank here, we have a friendly porcupine fish and he actually doesn't have any toxins in him, but he's just much, much spikier than your normal puffer, that puffer fish. So see, he's very friendly, he's really inquisitive. He wants to know what's going on, he wants to say hello. How difficult is it to find Dory? Age eight. Um, in the wild, Dorys can be quite hard to find. Um, their real name is a regal tang, um, and they can be quite rare. You find them around coral bombies and coral reefs. But they, once you know what they look like, once you can spot them really easily. At the aquarium, it's super easy to find Dory because one of our tanks has loads of them in it. So we're gonna move round to the front while Alice continues the chunk feed and we can watch it from a different perspective. This is our tank with our giant Pacific octopus Neptune in. If you wanted to learn a bit more about the giant Pacific octopus, we did another live stream two weeks ago, which is up on our Facebook, which you're more than welcome to watch and I would recommend. So, a lot of the tanks we have here showcase all the different body shapes. So, every fish in here is extremely different from one another different noses, different mouths, different uh, shapes of their body, different colorations. You've got some that are round, some that are long, some that are almost eel-like. Noah, age nine, and Daisy, age four, ask how many different species of fish do we have? So species overall include, so that's fish uh, and invertebrates, so stuff like crabs and anemones, we have almost 260 species in this aquarium. Um, we're all trying to learn the names of all of them all the time. Oh, at the back there, you can see convict blennies. So convict blennies sort of look a bit like eels. And they've got different mouths and different fins. And what they'll do is much like an eel, they'll hide in a crevice and poke their head out to try and get some food. 
Chris asks, oh, Sinan asks, how, what do we feed the fish? So we feed the fish a whole mixture of things. Um, we have pellets and flakes, which we feed them just like normal fish in normal fish tank, but we also try and keep them on a higher protein diet because that's much, much healthier for them. Um, so we feed them a mixture of mussel, prawn, little fish called sprat, as well as every day they get um, small plankton, small shrimp type creatures called krill. Ha. Nate and Eloan would like to know, how do you know that the bigger fish won't eat your smaller fish? Well, this is one of the reasons why we feed them a really high protein diet. Um, so they're always full and they're never hungry and the way that we feed them it's much easier for them to eat from the way that we're feeding as opposed to eating the other fish in the tank so we're sort of teaching them to be a little bit lazy just a reminder that the national marine aquarium in plymouth is a non-profit charity so if you get the opportunity and if you'd like to please uh, look at the link down below um, our donation link and make a donation anything helps it helps us fund vital scientific research habitat restoration as well as keeping all our fish happy and healthy all day long stanley said does the puffer fish expand when it's stressed yes puffer fish do expand when they're stressed what they do is they suck in loads and loads of water and balloon themselves up. And this particular type of puffer fish, those spikes that you can see that look like a slick back hair, all stick out on end. So it'll be a really, really painful bite. But one of the other funny things that they can do is using this reflex of sucking in water, they can also spit out water. So what they'll do is they'll sit at the top of the tank when you go by and they'll spurt water at you to try and get your attention. Uh, someone asked how many fish are there in total. I couldn't tell you. Um, they're quite hard to count because they're always moving. Has a fish ever eaten another fish in one of our tanks? Uh, it is quite possible. Um, in some of the bigger tanks, we do have some big, slightly more predatory species as well as some smaller um, prey species. And it doesn't happen very often. I'm happy to tell you, we, our fish stay alive for a very long time um, because they are well looked after, but it can happen occasionally. But very, very rare. So, I think we all know what these are. If everyone's seen the movie Finding Nemo, a classic, we have three different types of anemone fish in here. So, we have our clown and enemy fish, which looks like your classic Nemo body pattern. We also have a skunk and enemy fish, which is this guy here. So the skunk and enemy fish has that line, white line that goes down its back, a bit like a skunk. And then we also have the darker ones, which are called maroon uh, and enemy fish. So these are maroon and enemy fish, are very similar to your classic clown fish. Oh, okay. Uh, but they're just darker. Isabel wants to know what the funny tentacles are in the last tank. Are we talking about this one? So, are we talking about this one? Ah, so all of these are what are known as anemones. So anemones are a bit like jellyfish. They're sort of related to jellyfish and they attach to the substrate. So they will attach to rocks and they have all these tentacles that float in the water. And what these tentacles allow it to do is catch little passing particles in the water, um, which it can then eat by drawing it to its middle and getting all the nutrients. Alice would like to know, how does the clownfish protect itself from the anemone? So anemone fish and anemones are known as a mutualistic symbiotic relationship, which basically means they work together and they both benefit from it. So over hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, the anemone fish has evolved alongside the anemone um, to not actually feel the pain from the sting. And even if you can see some of them, see that skunk anemone fish at the back, it will rub itself 
on the anemone and that will pick up some of the stinging chemical that the anemone releases and means that the anemone fish, the clownfish, is less of a uh, ideal prey item as it's likely to give a sting. And what does the anemone get out of this? The anemone gets the poo from the clownfish, which is another excellent source of nutrients. Noah age nine asks, have the species attacked the divers? <laughs> so none of our fish have actually attacked our divers, but we do have a green turtle called Friday, who is a bit of a mischief maker. Uh, and one day on a dive, uh, he was following around the diver and gave him a little nip on the bum. Um, Albie 4 says, I really love the fish because they are really good at swimming. Yes, they are. Yes. They have evolved to live underwater. And I'm sure that if you spent enough time underwater, Albie, you'd be amazing at swimming as well. Isabel Hedgecock would like to know how many sharks we have in the aquarium. Uh, at the aquarium here, we have more sharks and rays than any other aquarium in the UK. We have three sand tigers, three sand bar sharks, three nurse sharks, three zebra sharks, 12 stingrays, Five evil rays? Loads, we've got loads, we've got loads, and they've all got names. Why is Friday a mischief maker? asks Amelia. That's a very good question. I think he's just really comfortable around people, uh, and he really enjoys having someone new in the tank um, to play with. So if you're really interested in our Turtle Friday, next week, next Wednesday, around the same sort of time, we're going to do a whole live stream dem uh, dedicated to Friday the Turtle. Are any of your fish scared of bubbles? Um, fish can be a bit jumpy. They're not particularly scared of bubbles as it's quite natural for them to encounter some sort of bubbles throughout the day. We always have bubblers in the tanks to keep oxygen in the water so they can breathe. Um, but any sudden movements tend to freak them out and they will run away until they know what's going on. What were the black and white things in the first tank? Or the last tank? The black and white ones in the last tank we went past were pyjama cardinal fish. Oh, we've got an awesome birthday for Scarlett, who is three today. So, happy birthday, Scarlett. I'm sorry you couldn't be in here with us to look at the fish today, but hopefully this is giving you a good bit of entertainment as you watch these dories swim around like maniacs. Anna Godden, can they see through the glass? That is an excellent question, okay? Depending on how thick the glass is, they can. Um, so this glass is quite thick, but most of the time what they see, because of something called refraction, is uh, a reflection basically, a bit like a mirror. Do we still have the turtle? Yes, we still have the turtle, George. Next Wednesday will be a fantastic opportunity because on the Facebook Live we're doing then, it's all about him. So you. Up there we have a porcupine fish with a little colourful rubber ball. This is what is known as enrichment. Uh, because puffer fish are so intelligent, they can get a bit bored um, and their hunting strategies can vary. They're quite good at picking stuff out of crevices. So we provide his food in this colourful rubber ball uh, as a form of um, of a challenge for him to get the food. Have any of the fish had a fight in the tank? Um, no, all our fish are pretty friendly with each other. 
Uh, although I can imagine that when no one's here, maybe they may get into a little argument here or there, but uh, nothing that I've seen. So here is a Moorish idol. Uh, does anyone know what his name was in Finding Nemo? Put it in the comments below. Hey, what was his name? It was in the fish tank in the dentist's office. His name was Mr. Grumpy Gill, or Gill. Um, they're not the easiest fish to look after. They're quite fragile, as well as um, can be slightly aggressive with other Moorish idols, other gills in the same tank, So, which is why we try and only keep one in a tank on its own. So, this guy is known as a cleaner rat, and these guys are really, really popular on coral reefs. Why do you think that is? It's because they're really good at picking parasites and other bits of dirtiness off fish's skins. So it's like going for a manicure, and actually it's been witnessed in the wild that fish will actually queue up um, around reefs where there are cleaner rats, and they will take turns coming to get cleaned. Uh, and they're so valued and so uh, appreciated by other fish that even big predatory species like groupers will sit there with their mouth wide open, and this rat will go inside its mouth and pick its teeth clean, a bit like a dentist's teeth cleaning. Lee asks, have you got a clown triggerfish? We don't have a clown triggerfish in this area. The triggerfish we do have are the Picasso triggerfish. Um, but they all have interesting colours. Have the fish got other toys to play with? Yes, so our puffer fish also have rings, like little hoops. Um, and we use that as another form of target feeding. Um, so they'll swim to the hoop to get their food. And this is just another way of making the feed a bit more interesting. Michael would like to ask, are there any dolphins in the aquarium? No, we don't have any dolphins in the aquarium. Um, personally, I believe that dolphins belong in the wild. Um, they were granted um, non-human person status um, by the WWF and because of this and their intelligence I think they really they belong in the wild with enough space to play. I want a fish tank for my birthday, says Lucy. What's your top tip for looking after them? Oh, this is from Tilly. So, my top tip would be to start small um, and start with a freshwater tropical aquarium. So all of the fish we have here are marine species, which means that they live in the sea. Um, and they are the most fantastic creatures, but to domesticate and keep in a tank, it's a lot of work. With freshwater aquarium, you don't need to worry too much about stuff like how salty the water is, or the pH of the water, because it's a lot easier to maintain. Um, so if you start with a small freshwater tropical tank, and make sure that you have a good range of species, so as well as having fish, you also want something like some snails and some shrimp because they're really good at helping you clean it, um, as well as looking for online tutorials on keeping fish so that you look after them the best way. So this funny character with his smiley face is a bicolour parrotfish. Now he doesn't look like most other parrotfish right now, and that's because he's still in his semi-juvenile stage. So a lot of fish, when they're younger, they can look completely different to how they'll look when they get older. So maybe in a couple months time, he may look like a completely different fish to the one he does now. How old can a cowfish live? That's a very good question. If they're well looked after, um, most cowfish could probably live in the region of three to eight years. Um, it really depends on when they're caught, 
um, how they are raised and the quality of um, looking after them. Do the fish try and take other fish's toys? Uh, no, not really. Um, my siblings used to do that to me, um, but most of these fish uh, are trained with a toy, so they become conditioned and get used to it, and the other fish probably don't even realize it's in there. How do you make the water salty? asked Sophia, age 10. Well, there's lots of different ways of doing this. There's only a couple. Um, you can either bring in salt water, um, so you can get salt water either from the sea, depending on what kind of tank and what kind of species you're going to have, because you've got to think about temperature and salinity. Um, or you can add, well, there's a special type of salt that we get um, that we can add to the water, and that means that we can gradually raise um, the salinity if we need to. James, our age nine, wants to know, do the fish like being in the aquarium? Uh, I've tried asking them, but they're not very talkative. Um, I think that most of them probably do. They're very well looked after, they're very well fed, and in the aquarium, they don't have to worry about potentially getting eaten by a bigger fish. pretty done deal. Alright, we're going to take a couple more questions and I'm afraid we might have to end it in a minute because I've got to go back to looking after the fish. Do you have razor clams, asks Alfie, age nine. We do, but we don't actually keep them uh, in any tanks. Uh, razor clams are really good food for a lot of different fish. Um, so we actually get them in to feed um, a lot of our fish. Do fish need a special temperature? That is a fantastic question, okay? So every different species um, has a particular temperature that it will thrive in. So all of the fish in the biozone area are from the, either the Indian Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. So the temperature that they like best is somewhere between 18 and 24 or 26 really it just depends on the species um, but if the water gets too hot the fish gets stressed and the water gets too cold it also stresses them out so it's all about keeping the fish happy um, and maintaining the temperature cool all right so I think we're actually gonna have to end it there we'll let you look at some more of the fish a little bit longer If you want to do any shout outs, put it in the comments and I'll be happy to shout out anyone. So all of us here at the aquarium hope you're getting on very well um, in this troubling period of time. I hope you're all safe and well at home and isolating in a happy manner. Um, we really miss you here at the aquarium. We miss having people come through and I'm sure some of the fish miss having company and people to show off for. Once again, I just want to say that we are a non-profit charity um, and any donations, any help you can give us is really beneficial. It helps us look after the fish better as well as support ocean conservation with research and habitat restoration. We're all working really hard to keep our animals safe, happy and well fed. Um, and we just want you all to be safe, happy and well fed during this time so that you can come back and enjoy everything we have to offer here. Remember next week is our Friday the Turtle live stream. Um, so look out for that. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you for our next Aquarium Live and we look forward to having you back at the Aquarium when we can all go outside again. <laughs>